Your Honor, my client does not want a divorce and is asking the court to schedule counseling. She believes her marriage is strong enough to overcome this mishap with a little help. That's what her attorney said, she, meaning my soon-to-be, if I have anything to do with it, ex-wife, Julie, my lawyer stood up. Your Honor, a 12-month affair with several men resulting in a child can hardly be called a mishap, especially when DNA proves that the child is not my client's. We believe there is no benefit in prolonging this fiasco of a marriage. Counseling is not going to change anything, it is because of the child that I am inclined to order counseling. The judge said, the child needs a stable home to grow up, if you think I'm going to raise that cheating bitch's bastard, I said loudly, my lawyer flinched. The judge banged his gavel hard. One more word, and I will hold you in contempt. He shouted at me, I am ordering one month of counseling at two sessions a week. You will attend Mr. Stedman or else. He stared at me intently for a moment, then banged the gavel again. That's all. Julie, my ex-wife looked smug as I entered the counselor's office. I'm Dr. Sullivan, but you can call me Gerald. Can I call you Brian? He smiled at me. No, you can't. You can address me as Mr. Stedman. Brian, that won't be necessary. Julie started. You don't have to address me at all, bitch. I snapped at her. I think we need to calm down, Dr. Sullivan said, please, Mr. Stedman, have a seat. He pointed to one of the chairs side by side in front of his desk. I pushed the chair a good meter and a half away from the chair, Julie was sitting in and plopped into it. Gerald said. Okay. He began. I couldn't hear anything else as I pulled out a set of wireless headphones put them in my ears and started listening to music from my phone. Gerald looked at me in silence and then started talking to Julie, I couldn't hear what he was saying and just kept playing with my phone while listening to music. After about 15 minutes, I saw Julie stand up. She looked at me and stomped out of his office, I pulled out my headphones. Okay, doctor. Good session. I'll see you Thursday. I'm canceling sessions and sending my report to the judge. Even better, I'm out of the office, the judge wasn't happy. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't hold your client in contempt, he snarled at my attorney. Your Honor, you ordered my client to attend the sessions, he attended the first session as ordered. The remaining sessions were cancelled by the counselor. The counselor's report clearly states that he made no attempt to participate in the session. He wore headphones and ignored them throughout. The judge replied. The order was for him to be present, my counselor replied, he was present. Given that counsel believe that from continuance would be of no benefit, I would like to ask you to grant the divorce as per the motion, not on your life, said the judge. I am ordering four weeks of counseling. Mr. Stedman will attend them and will become involved. When I arrived, the office was furnished in exactly the same style as before. Two chairs, half a meter apart, stood opposite the doctor's desk. He sat behind it. There was nothing on the desk, but a yellow notebook and a photograph of a pretty woman whom I guessed to be about 30 years old, and a child who looked to be about 6 years old. Mr. Stedman said the doctor, please have a seat. I started to move the chair again, Julie held out her hand to stop me, and I jumped back. I am notifying you both that any physical contact will be considered an attack on my person and will be met with appropriate force in response, I said, Julie odd stepping back. I pushed the chair back again and sat in it. Pulled out my cell phone again. Mr. Stedman, the judge has ordered you to attend the hearing, I know. I said. I'm using my phone to record the session to prove my participation my attorney says some counselors have been known to have their own agenda since my soon-to-be ex-wife has been seeing you for quite some time, I feel that you have already developed a relationship with her that could work against me, what if I don't want you to record the sessions, the doctor asked, then I will go back to the court and demand another counselor. I replied. I have that option. The only reason I didn't is because it would cause even more delays. Julie, how do you feel about the sessions being recorded? He looked at her. 
Never mind, she said waving her hand. Can we just get started? Okay, Gerald said, what I'd like to do first before we start, I interrupted him. Can I ask you a question? Of course, he said. You can ask questions at any time. I may ask you to refrain from asking at certain points in the process, but right now go ahead. He smiled encouragingly at me. Have you slept with her yet? Julie sighed, but Gerald didn't seem embarrassed by that. No. Julie and I have not and will not have any sexual contact. He said softly. It would be inappropriate, even if I wasn't already very happily married. Did that answer your question? I nodded. I believed him. Although he had to be one of the few men Julie had been dating for the last year not to sleep with her, good. Then as I said, I'd like to start by setting our expectations. Since I've had several conversations with Julie, I'd like her to tell me what she wants to accomplish in these sessions and what her desired outcomes are. I would ask that while she is speaking, you refrain from comments or questions until the very end after Julie tells us what she hopes to accomplish I would ask you to do the same. I refrained from commenting. I didn't look at Julie as she began to speak. First of all, Brian, she began. Don't talk to me. I growled. Talk to me, Julie, Gerald said, tell me what you want Mr. Stedman to hear. I want him to hear how sorry I am for hurting him. I know what I did was wrong, it's just that he spent so much time at work and traveling that I was lonely, I realize how much I hurt him, and if I could go back and change the past, I would give anything to do that, I love him more than anything in the world, I know we can overcome this if he would just give me a chance, I will show him that I can be the best wife a man could ever want, we could raise our child together and give him a great life, maybe even a brother or sister. I want us to be together, and I know we can do it. We can get through this, I know we can. Gerald smiled at Julie. Okay. Thank you, Julie. Now you, Bree, I mean, Mr. Stedman, what would you like to say? I looked at him. I'd like to see that cheating cheater gang raped infected with a rare and incurable venereal disease and die a slow and agonizing death. I said. Julie burst into tears and ran out of the room. That was useless. Gerald remarked, and I don't want to be useless. The bitch spent a year hooking up with half the men in town, got pregnant, and tried to pass the baby off his mind. If I hadn't gotten suspicious and demanded a DNA test, now I'd even be forced to pay child support on some other bastard's kid. Tell me doc, how exactly am I supposed to act? It's natural to be angry but you have to look through the prism of anger at what you had. He replied. Do you even know what you're talking about? I snapped at him. Have you ever had the love of your life, the person you trusted with your heart and soul, and for whom you would literally die to protect shit on you so badly that you questioned your own sanity? When I found out what was going on, I wanted to die. I seriously considered killing myself. How can someone who professes to love another person hurt them so much that they drive them to suicide? Also, you'll notice she never once said she regretted what she did. Not for fucking all those men, not for lying time after time, not for getting knocked up and not even being able to guess who the father of the baby is. The only thing she is sure of is that it wasn't the man who should have given her the baby, namely so since you have no idea idea what it's like to be in my position, don't sit here with your sanctimonious smile and bookish education and tell me I should look past my anger. Right now, my anger is all I have, just let me get this cheating wench out of my life and try to rebuild some of the pieces she left me, does that count as participation? I snapped at him as I left his office. When I got home, I decided to prepare a little for the next session. Maybe I could prove my point. I've asked Julie to let us do this session without her, Gerald said when I walked into his office the following week, I feel like we can accomplish more in face-to-face -face mode to begin with, if it still counts towards the court-ordered counseling, I'm more than happy not to be in the same room with this lady, I sat down placing the A4 envelope I brought on my lap, can we try to refrain from name-calling? Please, it's unconstructive and only gets in the way, I don't want to be constructive. 
I just want to get through these sessions and get this row crap out of my life forever, I didn't want these sessions at all. She just intends to cause me as much misery as she can, she doesn't want a divorce because the prenup leaves her with nothing, so she's trying to get me to take her back. That's not gonna happen. What about the baby? He's innocent, of course, he can't be punished for a he's not my problem or my concern. You think I'm supposed to take in every tramp who can't keep up and gets knocked up, those kids have nothing to do with me, and neither does this one, why are you so sure there's only one outcome to this? You obviously loved her very much. These feelings don't go away overnight, your anger is masking it now, but once it subsides and believe me, it will, you'll find that there are feelings left that you can develop feelings that you can use to repair your relationship and even make them stronger. The smile returned. I wanted to punch him. It was time to give him a taste of his own medicine, I pointed to the picture on his desk. You have a nice family. Have you been married long? We're not here to discuss my eleven years, if my sources are correct. In love since childhood married right out of college, waiting for you to have kids and then little Ethan showed up, he's nine now. And this picture must have been taken a couple years ago. How did you he started, did you know that your dear Cheryl has secrets of her own? I continued, maybe you know that when she says she's at her Pilates class on Wednesday afternoons and you're at work, she's actually at the Motel Aid on Patterson, fucking her personal trainer, that's ridiculous, he stammered, but I could see he wasn't sure. He went very pale. Really? I said pulling some pictures out of an envelope. I laid them out one by one on his desk. They showed a beautiful slender woman entering a hotel room with a young man. He had his arm around her waist, and they were looking at each other lovingly. I pulled out the DVD and put it on his desk as well. It also has footage from inside the room if you want real proof of what they were doing. It's pretty graphic, so I wouldn't watch that if I were you. I made that mistake when I got the private investigator's report that footage will haunt me for the rest of my life, he looked like he was about to throw up. Oh, and one more thing I said, Ethan. No, he said quietly. Please God. No. I pulled the DNA report out of the envelope, it looked like the fitness instructor wasn't the first, I think he would be too young to be Ethan's father, but whoever the father is, it's not you. I said quietly. He got up and ran to the bathroom, which I realized was right next to his office, I heard him vomit noisily into the toilet. Do you understand now? I asked him as he sank back into the chair again. Tears were streaming down his face, he looked at me with dead eyes, now do you understand the pain she caused me and why I have to cut her out of my life? He nodded languidly. Good. I said. Now there is one more thing you need to know, he looked at me with a look of horror on his face. Is there something else? He asked pitifully, it's all a fake. I replied. None of what I have just shown you is true, as far as I know, your wife is as loving and faithful as you thought, and Ethan is your son, but the pictures, he asked. Photoshop, it's amazing what you can do with a few social media posts and a little time and effort I replied grimly. If you'd given them to someone who was even remotely competent, you'd have been told they were all forgeries. I pulled some more pictures out of the envelope. But to prove it, here are the originals I created them from. His face began to color and I wondered if he was going to attack me. DVD, he asked, blank, DNA report, it's actually a DNA report on my cheating, Kent's baby, I just changed the names and dates. He sat stunned for several minutes, fresh tears beginning to run down his face. Why did you do that? What do you think you could accomplish by destroying my marriage and my life? He asked. That was not my intention. That's why I told you almost immediately that the whole thing was a fake. I didn't want you or your family to be permanently harmed at all. I just wanted you for once to actually understand the pain I went through, the feelings of loss, anger, and resentment. For a few minutes, you experienced it, and I'm still experiencing it. Your short-term suffering is my life now and in the future, making me sit here with this bitch listening to her babble 
about how much she loves me and wants me back means I have to keep reliving that pain over and over and over again. There are laws about cruel and unusual punishment. Why don't they apply in this case, I just want to move on. Try to gather what little I have left and move on, why can't you in the court let me do that? I gathered all the papers from the table and put them back in the envelope, I'll leave it to you to handle, I said. I'm sorry to have to do this, but I need you to understand. I left his office, your honor, I have a report of the court ordered counseling sessions that my client was required to attend, my attorney addressed the judge again. I have a copy. The judge growled, it appears that the counselor believes that even after three sessions out of the eight sessions ordered by the court, this marriage cannot be saved and that for the well-being of all parties involved, including the child, the best solution is to allow it to dissolve, yes, your honor. I ask that you order that the divorce be finalized as stated, the judge looked at me for a long second, I looked straight ahead not wanting to look him in the eye. It settled, he finally said banging his gavel.